Well, that article was full of words. My channel focuses on Brandon Sanderson, and historically, I mostly stick to his books. However, I've set myself up as somewhat of an authority on Sanderson, at least in my own circles, and with how much traction this article has gotten, I figured it would be worth it to put my opinions and observations out there. Because my viewpoint is worth listening to. Not that you have to believe that, I'm just working on making myself believe that. Yay self-confidence issues. Yay transparency? I've met Brandon multiple times. I've interacted with his team in a wide variety of scenarios. I've been to the Cosmere House on three different occasions and been in the Elantris suite. I've been volunteering with Dragonsteel for over a year, including at the last Dragonsteel Con, and was on several panels. I'm about as deeply embedded in Sanderson's realm as you can get without actually working there. And I've also tried to work there. When I first read the article, I guess I was approaching it assuming a more positive intent, like most of the other numerous articles I've read on Sanderson, including the one they mentioned in LDS Living. So I missed, glossed over, or otherwise interpreted what was said as benign, or at worst, just a really weird take. If you haven't read the article, and I'm not saying you should, Daniel Green's video of his encounter is a pretty good representation, the main qualm that the author has with Brandon is that he's bland. Well, story-killingly lame is the exact quote. And you know, that's fair, if that was the only thing he said. Brandon, as a person, is just a person. He's just a guy. There's nothing inherently mystical or awe-inspiring about him. When you talk with him, you don't get the feeling that he's hiding some deep dark secret, demonic or divine. He's just a guy that loves what he does, and has gotten very good at it. The article tries to pin down that Sanderson is not a good writer, though they only briefly touch on the usual criticisms. Criticisms that I've talked about in previous videos. His prose is no great gift to the English language, though it's obviously gotten better over the years. His descriptions can be a little wordy or repetitive, but I don't think any more so than any other writer. The article just gets way too personal, and takes pot shots at not just Sanderson as a human, but his family, his team, and his fans, mostly for being part of a certain religion. I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. But then not actually giving any reasons as to why that's bad. For claiming he didn't have anything to write about, the author certainly wrote a lot of nothing. The general consensus is that this was simply rage bait, which seems to be the guy's MO anyway. And it worked. A lot of people are talking about the article. People completely unfamiliar with Sanderson, yes, there are some out there, are talking about how douchey this article is. If any press is good press, wonderful things are happening for Wired right now. Honestly, the most impactful part of the whole thing for me was not the article itself, but rather Brandon's response to it, which is linked below. Full of charity and calm stability, which I guess could be categorized as boring, though it's the exact type of boring I want my life to be, Brandon validates people's feelings, adds context to the events in the article, and finishes with a statement about our worth as not just fans, but as people. We like things. We obsess over things. We collect and create and curate and compose what other people may consider boring, useless, or not what anyone would consider an effective way to support a family and raise two children in your 30s just because you're too scared to try anything else. <clears throat> what? My point, and I think Brandon's point as well, is to go ahead and be weird. Or don't. Be normal. Be boring. Like what you like. Create for creation's sake. And if other people come at you for trying to make the world a better place, your own real-life world building, they don't need to be a character in your story. Though I would find it hilarious to see a character named Kihi get stabbed in the back in the next Stormlight novel. Thanks for being awesome, everybody. Doug and Matt are more particularly awesome. If I could write unwired articles about how great they are, I would. These guys are also all awesome, and that is an awesomeness you could all obtain by supporting me on Patreon. That article certainly happened, but for the first time, I don't think you need to read and find out. I totally lied when I promised my next video would be Cosmere Connections 4. Oops. To make it up for you, I'll do, like, three instead of just one. Probably. There's so much, guys. Oh, perfection.